after days away from the courtroom, the trial of Jason Mead resumed. Could you see anything in his hands at all? No, nothing at all. Could you see anything inside the car that caught your attention? No. Today, special prosecutors called two new witnesses, the surprise witness, recalling what he saw moments before Casey Goodson Jr. was shot and killed. You wanted to go see some cops kick down some doors, right? Yes. You wanted to see some action, right? Yes. Policing is also very dynamic and subject to a range of interactions where we can't possibly develop well-rounded protocols for everything. Both faced intense questioning from Jason Mead's defense. While the family of Casey Goodson Jr. watches and listens to every word. With that, we thank you for joining us today for NBC4 at 5. I'm Jared Smalley. And I'm Sarah Johnson in for Jennifer Bullock. NBC4's Anna Hoffman was also in that courtroom to watch all of this unfold. Anna, what else did this surprise witness have to say? Sierra and Jared, Christopher Korn's testimony contradicts what Meade has been saying this entire time. He did just come forward last week. He says he was working with a heating and cooling company in the area at the time of the shooting. He did say that he saw his van on the news, and that's when he decided he had to tell his story. This is video of Korn pulling up behind Meade's truck at the intersection of Carl and Ferris Roads. That's where Meade claims Goodson pointed a gun at him. Korn says he saw saw Goodson clearly and he was not holding a gun. Korn did say he saw Goodson driving recklessly and blamed that on him dancing with his hands off the wheel. Korn said he followed Meade back toward Goodson's home out of curiosity and parked in front of a home but did not see the shooting. The defense questioned changes in Korn's story and the fact that he admitted to watching media coverage of the trial. He also admits to posting about the trial on social media, then later deleting those posts and his Facebook as a whole. Korn says he attempted to reach out to Goodson's mother after the trial started, but did not get a reply. Law enforcement and both parties have spent the last few days questioning Korn to determine if his testimony is valid. All of those interviews came into play today. Do you have any sort of agenda as to why you ultimately decided to come forward and try to make contact with uh, law enforcement about what you saw that day? <laughs> I had a last minute decision and just felt like it was the right thing to do. Why? I just felt like somebody needed to hear what, what I saw and had to say. As I understand your motivation for coming forward is you wanted to do the right thing, right? Correct. Is the right thing deleting your posts on the news accounts? Is that the right thing to do? No. Is the right thing to do to delete your Facebook account after you've been interviewed by the FBI? I mean, I felt it was the right thing yes to no. do. Was it the right thing to do, yes or no? No. There was... The prosecution's final witness was a law professor from the University of South Carolina. He's also a former police officer. Seth Staunton has testified in other high-profile use of force cases like the 2021 Derek Chauvin trial. He says in his expert opinion, Meade did not use the proper police practicing principles, and there were other ways to go about this. The defense really tried to question him on the use of force policies in Ohio, to which he replied that he's not an expert in that. The prosecution says that they have no more witnesses and we're expecting closing arguments in the morning. Local for you at the Franklin County Courthouse, I'm Anna Hoffman, NBC4. Anna, thank you for that. NBC4, of course, has been following this high-profile trial since the opening gavel and will stay until a verdict is delivered. For the latest updates, continue to watch NBC4 on air and online at NBC4i.com.